All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Uh, trying to focus on some shorter videos and give you guys some information. So today's video, I'm gonna go into the three uh, fly rods I would take with me on a summer trip out uh, west, like the trip I took this summer. Uh, and also I'll throw in a fourth one at the end of the video because if I don't mention a six weight, somebody's gonna lose their mind. All right, like I said, I'm gonna pull some clips for this video and walk through and explain to you the three rods I chose uh, and why I chose them and why I think they'd be a good if I were recommending rods for somebody else. Why I would say these would, these they covered me for everything that I did and I think they'll cover cover you as well. So let's kick this off. We'll go into a seven and a half foot three weight. This is my go-to uh, small stream backpacking rod, mostly because uh, it gives me enough reach to get over anything behind me. Also, it's short enough that I can stay in the canopy, under the canopy. Um, it's maneuverable in tight spaces. It's light enough that I can fish for you know small brookies, uh, rainbows, cutthroats, browns, and the little tiny streams. But the most most important part of this for me, and why I chose a, th a three weight as opposed to like a two weight or a one weight, because some guys like that like those and they're a lot of fun. For me, I don't know when I get to a stream, maybe what kind of class I'm gonna find. And sometimes you find some man-sized fish in these small streams, which is the case in this, this stream here. Like I found, that that's a that's a real fish. And uh, that was my three weight. I was able to fight that fish, land it, and put it in the net without taxing it and killing it. Three weight allows me to uh, handle the fish quickly get them back in the water, get them revived, and get them gone. So that's why I choose a three weight over a two weight, even though like, you know, some of these streams would definitely be two weight water. It's just, I don't own a two weight. So seven and a half foot three weight, like I said, it has reach for over stuff, reach for high sticking, um, still short enough to get under the canopy. You can do uh, tons of bow and arrow casting, um, working through tight, you know, conditions and brush, and you can still, you can still move with that and maneuver. Uh, so that's the first one I would recommend, a seven and a half foot three weight. Uh, we'll jump right into my, my, I guess my general nymphing rod, which is a 10 foot rod. When I first started fly fishing, I used a five weight, a uh, nine foot five weight. And I have, since I haven't fished nine foot five weight, I fish it probably once a year. My 10 foot four weight is the my go-to for everything I'm gonna do nymphing because uh, for one, I can high stick and I can get across lots of seams and I can fish, you know, places and then stand back and fish far off. And that, that's pretty good because when you're high sticking, for me, uh, I'm trying to mend as less as possible. Like I like mending, it's fun, but at the same time, mending, it messes the water up. You're, you're moving your water, your, your line on the water, you're disturbing the water. I'll do, a, maybe do another uh, video on just mending another point um, and talk about why, you know, and how and walk through the video and kind of do that. But for today, let's just say high sticking is great. Uh, and I try to avoid mending as, as, as much as possible, which is why I choose a 10 weight or 10 foot because it gives me some reach and some distance. With that said, uh, a 10 foot rod will give you some good long distance mends. And sometimes on some of these you know, medium sized streams, you're gonna have to throw some mends uh, at distance. So it's super, super helpful for doing that. Uh, the other thing I like about a 10 foot rod is I fish a lot of heavy indicator rigs. So when I'm nymphing, uh, airlock, thingamabobbers, lots of weight, beat ahead flies. I got another video, again, I'll link it here, up there somewhere, or down in the description, where I talk about nymphing with a 10-foot rod. One of the things that you have to do when you're fishing bobber-style indicator rigs is you have to open your loop up. If you have a tight loop, when you when you cast, at the end of your cast, your flies are gonna hinge, and they're gonna come back on themselves. So, 10-foot rod allows me to open my loop up a lot more and keep those flies separated, especially if you're standing like in waist-deep water and you're nymphing, because you've just brought the sur surface of the water closer to the end of your fly rod, which just means you're gonna end up slapping your flies through the water a little bit more. So 10 foot rod is where it's at. Like I said, high sticking, long distance mends. Um, the last thing I wanna talk about with a 10 foot rod, and it's not necessarily the rod, it's really just how easy it is to, uh, to manage longer leaders. If I'm fishing, which I fish normally between 11 and 12 foot, a 10 foot rod means I can fish my entire leader and secure it outside of the rod. Uh, if you get to a nine foot rod and a 11 foot leader, you got three feet of uh, tip and leader that's hanging outside the rod that you have to go all the way up the eye. A lot of times I'm fishing a dry dropper. I got 11 foot to my first fly. 
I might have three or four feet of dropper. You're talking 14, 15, 16 feet of, you know, leader to tip it to first fly to your dropper. It's like a you know 15 foot system on a nine foot ride. You're you're dealing you're having six feet of overhang. So I don't like that. So for me, again, 10 foot is where it's at. 10 foot ride has a uh, four weight, has plenty of power. It's pretty much all I fish on the, on the white anymore because when presentation counts, I always want a four weight. But the other thing is, is that it has tons of power. You're gonna be able to land bigger fish. Uh, and say on, on a tailwater like the white where the, <laughs> the water is constantly rising and lowering d depending on the generation. One minute you're fishing, two flows, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty tame water conditions. Next thing you know, you're in five or six flows and you're throwing giant indicator rigs uh, with right. shot or you decide you want a nymph. Uh, Tempo rod, core weight, yep. it can do all that, oh, yeah. and it, they drop the water back down again at the end of the day, and you're in one unit, that's and you're, awesome, dude. that one rod will cover you for that too. So um, that's pretty much it for the 10-foot the four weight. Like I said, that's my go-to <laughs> nymphing rod. Easy merger. The dry. The, dry. Uh, the, the rod that I found that I use the most this summer, especially in Idaho and some of the smaller streams, was my 8.5-foot four weight. And the reason that was so important for me is because the eight and a half foot was kind of a mix between 10 and uh, seven and a half. So it gave me the ability to stay under the canopy. But also on, above anything that was behind me, I could also high stick any runs and it gave me pretty good distance mending. Um, but the other thing it did was I could allow, I could fish some smaller streamers uh, I could just clip off, like say midway between my leader, tie on a, a small uh, weighted like sparkle bugger or conehead fly or something like that, and have a lot of success with just small streamers in small water on a light rod. So uh, the other thing it does, like I said, it's short enough that you can fish in between. So here I am with uh, these two laydowns, and I'm just basically roll casting and basically staying over and under and between all the different you know obstructions and the things that are trying to. Uh, to mess up my day of fishing right here. But I uh, had a pretty fantastic spot and a lot of fish in it. Nine or 10 foot rod, probably, you know, kind of long for this seven and a half, probably doesn't have the power. Uh, if one of those fish decides it wants to run downstream, which is why I like a four weight. Uh, several times, you know, hook a fish and they try to get down river of me and I'm able to bring them back to, to bring them back to the net and have to chase them in this situation. Not going after any fish. I mean, there's a log in the way, so got to keep them, got to keep them in front of me. So, like I said, eight and a half foot four way for that. It's pretty, uh, pretty solid rod. Um, yeah, pretty maneuverable. Can bone arrow cast with it. Can get under the canopy above anything I see. And uh, yeah, that's uh, it's become my my pretty uh, pretty happy with it. Really good go to small stream rod. I could fish small brookies and browns and rainbows and still have the power and uh presentation of a four weight for streamers and bigger fish and some heavier flow heavy indicator rigs things like that uh so that's it that's uh that's the three i would recommend and like i said can't really cut the video off without saying if you're gonna head out west you probably need a six weight i don't fish five weights as much anymore but i definitely have a six weight and i carry my five weight but yeah there's gonna be, be some time if you find yourself in a meadow section um, or just with a lot of wind and you're in between like, you know, some valleys, a lot of times that'll act as a, uh, a funnel and it'll push the wind. So like a 30, 40 mile hour wind could just, it would ruin your day. So it's good to have a six weight. I didn't fish it much this summer, which is why I didn't talk about it. It's my streamer rod now. Um, and I didn't do any like really dedicated streamer fishing. I don't travel out West with those streamers. We have plenty of that in Arkansas. So if, if I'm going to those streamers, I'll just wait to do it. Uh, on the white river in the winter because that's kind of what i have locally um so when i go out west in the summer i'm thinking dry flies maybe some droppers uh i'll nymph a little bit in the morning sometimes you know at night or whatever but usually i try to save the streamers and the nymph fishing um for the other the other nine months of the year because i don't we just in arkansas we don't have a lot of dry fly opportunities uh we have plenty of streamer opportunities we have plenty of nymphing opportunities so i travel to do something different than what i do here so anyway, that's the three rods I would recommend if you're taking a summer trip out west. Uh, cover you for the small streams, the medium-sized streams. I still think a four weight's plenty big enough for the bigger water, but if you want to take a six, weight, a six weight or a five weight, hey, knock yourself out. I'm not here to tell you what to take. These are just my suggestions. So if you have any questions, drop those below. I uh, appreciate you watching the video, and uh, we'll get some more of this kind of information style out there. I think you guys have uh, you've expressed some interest in it, so I'll try to try to 
adds more to the channel. Thanks for watching.